Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a new study out of Ohio State University has shown that if you remain obese for most of your life, with regard to mortality, the outcome is not that good. However, also according to this new study, if you start in the normal range and gain weight gradually up to overweight, but not into the obese category, this appears to be the best outcome when it comes to mortality. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study out of Ohio State University has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Jeff Grabmeyer of Ohio State University, where he covers a study that was published in the journal Annals of Epidemiology, which looked into two generations of people that showed the gradual gaining of weight over a lifetime may be optimal for longevity. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. The study suggested that people who start adulthood with a BMI, that's a body mass index that's in the normal range, and then move on to being overweight in later life, but never reaching obese status, tended to live the longest. Adults in this category even lived longer than those whose BMI stayed in the normal range throughout their life. Those who started adulthood as obese and continued to add weight as they aged had the highest mortality rate of all. No surprise there. Hugh Zeng, PhD, lead author of the study and associate professor of sociology at Ohio State University said, the impact of weight gain on mortality is complex. It depends on both the timing and the magnitude of weight gain and where the BMI started. The main message is that for those who start at a normal weight in early adulthood, gaining a modest amount of weight throughout life and entering the overweight category in later adulthood can actually increase the probability of survival. Now, similar results were found in two generations of the Framington Heart Study participants. This study has followed the medical histories of residents of one city in Massachusetts and their children for decades. But the study has shown worrying trends for the younger generation. They are becoming overweight and obese sooner in their lives than their parents did. And as a result, they're more likely to have deaths linked to cumulative obesity. For this study, the Ohio State researchers used data on 4,576 people from the original cohort of the Framington Heart Study and for 3,753 of their children. The Framington Heart Study started in 1948 and followed the original participants right through until 2010. The children of the original participants, the second generation, were followed from 1971 to 2014. Professor Hu Xing, the lead author of the study, said the members of the original cohort had almost all died by the end of the study. So the results can uncover how BMI evolves over all of adulthood and provide a more accurate estimate than previous studies of how obesity is linked to mortality. For both generations, the researchers looked at data from those who were aged between 31 and 80. The main measure was BMI, which is based on a person's height and weight and is used as a rule of thumb to categorize a person as underweight, normal weight, overweight or obese. After analyzing the data on how participants BMI had changed over the years, the researchers found that the older generation generally followed one of seven BMI trajectories throughout their lives. The younger generation had six trajectories. This is because there was not enough people who had lost weight over their lives to have a downward trajectory as was present in their parents' generation. After controlling for a variety of confounding factors, these are factors that have previously been found to influence mortality, things such as cigarette smoking, gender, education, marital status and disease, the researchers then set out to calculate how each BMI trajectory was related to mortality rates 
for each of the generations. Let's take a look at the results. In both generations, those who started at the normal weight and moved slowly onto being overweight in later life, but never actually became obese, were the most likely to survive the longest. Those who stayed at the normal weight throughout their life were the next most likely to survive longer, followed by those who were overweight but remained stable. Next came those who were at lower level of normal weight. In the older generation, those who were overweight and lost weight then came next. The least likely to survive were the two groups that included those who started off as obese and then continued to gain weight throughout their lives. Again, not a real surprise. Now, while both generations showed the same basic results, the researchers discovered some worrying trends in the younger cohort. Professor Zeng pointed out that the higher BMI trajectories in the younger generation tend to shift upward at an earlier age relative to their parents. Moreover, the proportion of the sample in higher BMI trajectories systematically increased from the parental generation to their children. Medical advances mean that people are more likely to survive with obesity now than in the past. But there's a problem for the younger generation in this study. Professor Zeng closed by saying, even though the mortality risks associated with obesity trajectories have decreased across the generations, their contributions to population deaths increased from 5.4% in the original cohort to 6.4% in the offspring cohort. That's because more people are in the obesity trajectory in the offspring cohort. Now, with this study, we know more about weight trends earlier in life and how they are related to mortality. Now, this latest study supports and extends the findings of a 2013 study published in the American Journal of Epidemiology by Professor Zeng and his colleagues, which found out that people who were slightly overweight in their 50s but kept their weight relatively stable were the most likely to survive for the next 19 years. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I've made some notes that I'm going to uh, refer to now. So it looks as though the best outcome is for someone to have been in the normal range for most of their life. And as they get older, creep into the overweight range, but not go into or stay in the obese range for any length of time. Um, they use BMI as the standard. I'm not a big fan of BMI because, as you know, they just come up with one number that doesn't differentiate between muscle and fat. And generally, people with more muscle are going to be healthier than people with more fat, unless that muscle is obviously uh, gained through steroids, etc. Uh, I think for BMI for the older generation, probably not a, a great issue because the, the older generation, when you look at the dates of these, are not going to have been people who have been going to the gym regularly uh, and packing on the muscle. They're going to have been people that have been building muscle through normal everyday work. Using the BMI standard for the younger generation, I think is going to be a problem somewhat because, they, again, they just come up with the one number. That said, um, in my humble opinion, having seen the youth of today in the Middle East and in the Philippines and seen the youth of today on the television from UK news and America, kids today are far more squidgy than kids were when I was in my youth. Uh, I'd be interested to see this kind of study conducted again using body fat percentage as the standard and not just BMI. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I look forward to your comments in the comments section below about where you are. Are you normal? Are you creeping towards uh, overweight? Are you in the uh, obese category? And as a result of this video, are you going to try and bring yourself back into the overweight category? As always, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care. Stay safe. And I will see you soon. Bye for now.